All right, this morning, um, I want to speak to you about your identity. I've called today's message, um, Being Citizens of Heaven. Being Citizens of Heaven. Um, from the day we are born, uh, we are heading towards an unchangeable, non-negotiable appointment with death. Uh, and all that varies is our appointment time, and that's not a sad thing. Uh, it's just the process or the journey or the cycle of life. Uh, then after our death, our final destination, where we end up for eternity, is decided upon what we believed while we were alive. Uh, therefore, it's significant uh, that our believing takes place before we end that, at that place, uh, that we get things on the right track. John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. And this is Jesus, the Son of God, speaking to us. These are His words to us. John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send His, this is good news, isn't it? For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn us, that the world though He might be saved. So God sent His Son not to condemn, but to bring salvation, the opportunity of salvation to all of us. What you believe, in other words, will determine who you belong to, and who you belong to will determine what your eternity looks like. What you believe will determine who you belong to and who you belong to will determine what your eternity looks like. Those that belong to Jesus will not perish, but have eternal life. Uh, if you belong to Him, heaven becomes your destiny. Uh, heaven is the end point uh, of a believer's life. When they leave the planet, uh, they end up where they belong in heaven. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1 says this, For we know that, that our earthly house, that's our body, this tent is destroyed. We have a building from God, a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. Our destiny uh, uh, it belongs to uh, another realm, another situation, another place. Uh, the Bible goes on to make it very clear to us that even though we're in the world, we are not of the world. We are sojourners. We are pilgrims. We are travellers. That this is not where we will end up. We're just passing through uh, planet Earth. It's not our a destiny. It's not our home. It's not where we're going to spend eternity. Hebrews chapter 11 goes on to say this. These all died in faith, not having received all of the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them. They embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly, they seek a homeland. And so it's got to be a, a, a very clear picture inside of us that our, our, our life here on earth is somewhat short and eternity is really long. That at the end of the day, and you know, uh, we spend, what it be, uh, 70, 80, 100 years on the planet, uh, but there were thousands of years before and there's thousands of years after. And what we believe now determines who we belong to and where we're going to spend the rest of that time. The Bible goes on to make it very clear that we're in the earth, but we're not of the earth. It's not our final destination. It's not our home. And this is very important for us to understand. At some stage, uh, our heavenly home awaits us. We return to where we belong. Uh, and this is really important uh, for how we do life here. Uh, we are, we've got some sort of understanding of our natural citizenship. Um, you know, if you're, you're uh, born in Australia, you're Australian, or you're a South African, or you're a Swedish, or you're Indonesian, and I'm only using the easier to say ones, all right? Uh, uh, but we understand that we are people of a country, we belong to something, we belong to somebody. Um, and being a citizen of a country uh, determines or gives you certain rights and privileges. Uh, once, you, once you leave your country, your citizenship, and I want you to hear this, once you leave your country, your citizenship is the basis of your identity. You're nobody in the world unless you're a citizen of somewhere. Once you leave Australia, uh, what gives you an identity is not your name, it's your citizenship, it's who you belong to. That gives you rights and it gives you privileges and different countries uh, have different rights and different privileges. You can't get on a, a ship or a plane without proof of your identity, it's your passport. And uh, 
It's that citizenship that gives you rights and authority in different countries, even though you don't live there. Uh, you mightn't have read this, but there's a part, can we show that part of the uh, passport? The first page uh, of your passport, if you're an Australian citizen, says this. Uh, the Governor General of the Commonwealth of Australia, being the representative in Australia of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, uh, request all those whom it may concern to allow the bearer to pass freely and without let or hindrance and to afford him or her every assistance and protection of which he or she may stand in need. So your passport or your citizenship uh, gives you rights. So if you're in trouble in another country, what you need to have is not your license, but your passport, all right? Uh, it's your identity. Without your passport, you have no power in another place. But with it, I, 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 know, this, I know this very clearly. I was in uh, Moscow uh, preaching for Hillsong, uh, Moscow over there, and I was looking around Red Square, and uh, I was accosted by a, 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 an armed policeman. Uh, I was with the uh, assistant pastor there. Uh, she was showing me around and uh, we were accosted and he asked for my passport. And I didn't have it on me because I, I don't like to keep my passport on me in countries I'm not really that aware of. I like to lock it up in a safe somewhere. Uh, but he was not happy with that because now I had no identity. And uh, therefore, he didn't know who I was or, or where I was going, the whole thing. And she was Ukrainian, and the Russians somewhat don't like the Ukrainians. And uh, so we we're in a little bit of trouble here. Uh, they decided this was an opportunity for them uh, to uh, extract something out of us. So uh, they decided to interrogate us. It was winter. And I remember was, they put us under a tree and it was freezing cold and they would come and speak to us. And again, I didn't understand a word of this, not one word. And, uh, and they would speak. Then the, guy, the guard who was now getting cold would go and warm up and send another guard out. Uh, and, and, and this was for three hours. We were, we were just about frozen under that tree and different people would come out and interrogate us. And again, I'm, I'm, sh I'm saying, what's going on? She says, it's okay, it's gonna be okay. I said, it doesn't look like it's gonna be okay. Um, and then a, uh, a police van pulls up and the doors open. They throw us in the back of the police van. We're now surrounded by four or five guards with machine guns in the back of a Moscow Russian police van. Every James Bond movie I've ever seen came flooding back. And every picture of a Russian jail entered my head that we would never be seen again on top of the land. And, uh, and uh, as they did this, they were talking again. Uh, her, she had rung her husband. He had eventually got there. They threw him in the back of the van. And, uh, and now we're all in there. I'm going, they're yelling at each other. And I'm going, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm never going to, this is it. I'm, and uh, I'll never be seen again. Uh, and then eventually he rolls out a bunch of American dollars and he throws it onto the seat next to one of the guards. All the noise stops. They open the door and they threw us out, literally threw us out. And that all happened because I didn't have my identity on me and they decided this was a great way to make some money. So I get out and they said, I said, it's all good. And they said, yeah, it's fine. I said, that whole predicament was about money. You could have told me that a lot earlier. I would have given them a lot more, a lot quicker than all of this. So be assured that your identity is determined or the power of your identity is determined by who you belong to. So it's important that we understand that in a natural sense, but also that we understand it in a spiritual sense. We understand that our citizenship has rights, authorities and privileges because citizens of different countries have different rights depending on who they belong to and who they are. Uh, look at Acts chapter 22. It's the story of Paul. He's in trouble again. You know, every, every town Paul walked in, there was a banner up over the streets that said, welcome to our jails. That was Paul's life of blessing and prosperity. And as they bound him with thongs, obviously not the thongs we use or the thongs the Americans use. That would look very strange. Uh, Paul said to the centurion who stood by, is it lawful for you to scourge or scourge a man who is a Roman and uncondemned? When the centurion heard that, that he went and told the commander saying, take care of what you do for this man is a Roman citizen. I want you to see that. 
Paul was a Roman citizen. He was about to get into a lot of trouble. Then he declared his citizenship. Then it all changed. Paul's citizenship had a profound effect on what can happen and what can't happen to him. All right, so we need to hear this very clearly so we understand our rights and authority that we have as citizens of heaven. We need to see the power that comes with who we belong to. Um, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, outsiders without rights of citizenship, but you are fellow citizens with the saints, God's people and are members of God's household. We need to be very clear on our, not just our natural citizenship, but our spiritual citizenship, all right? We have rights and authority and privileges here on earth, not just in heaven. Paul wasn't in Rome when he evoked his rights and privileges. He was in Jerusalem and yet they still carried weight outside of where he came from. And you and I, even though we are not of the world, but we're in the world, have rights and authority that come from heaven that we can use here on planet Earth while we're travelling through. And identity is very important then for us and, and understanding whose we belong to because that's what gives you your authority, your rights. So when the enemy starts to beat up on you, starts to chain you down, when the enemy starts to try and shut you up or starts to steal from the blessing God has from you, you need to evoke your rights and authority as a citizen of heaven. Back off, I am a child of God. Back off, I have rights and authority that work here just as they do in heaven. I am a son, a daughter of the King of Kings. Be assured if you know who you are, and whose you are, darkness will start to retreat. Pastor Mike didn't mention this morning, but in that praise report, uh, that, la- that was a lady, I think it was, a stage four cancer. It wasn't just a new one, it was a really bad one. So even with treatment, they didn't expect to see the results they got. And within six months, it wasn't just being dealt with, it was gone, yeah. all right? See, we've got rights. As citizens of heaven, we can declare our spiritual authority. You need to evoke your rights as a child of the King, as a citizen of heaven. And this is where it gets really important for you and I, is that if Paul didn't understand his birthright and his citizenship and the power of that citizenship, if he didn't declare, I am a citizen of Rome, in that situation, what would have happened to him? Uh, they were about to scourge him, which means they were beating him. They would have put him in chains. They would have put him in a dark cell. They would have put him in isolation. He would have had lack. And this is what the Bible says about what the enemy wants to do to us. The enemy's plan is to always put us in pain, darkness, chains, isolation, and lack. John 10.10 10 says this very clearly. The thief, which is the enemy, does not come except to steal to kill and destroy. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So the enemy's plan is always to steal, to kill and destroy, to bring pain, darkness, chains, isolation and lack. And if we don't know who we are or who we belong to, we lose the power to stand against our enemy. We need to make sure we're very clear on who we are and whose we belong to. In our times, in the generation we live in, um, Identity theft is a really big business, really big, especially with social media now and the internet and the web and the whole thing. It's a lot easier for people to steal your identity. And if somebody steals your identity, they steal your money, they steal your assets, they steal your rights, you become powerless. This is not a new business. This has been happening since the Garden of Eden about identity theft. All right, trying to steal the identity of believers. So be assured your enemy, as great as strategy against you, is spiritual identity theft. In other words, if he can stop you knowing who you are in Christ, if, you can get, if he can get you believing you're not important to God, if he can deceive you about your authority and rights, you become powerless and a victim to him and your circumstances. It's identity theft. So it's gonna be very important that we understand exactly who we are because if we understand exactly who we are and whose we belong to, we can carry rights and authority to bring with us a stand against the enemy. 
There's the account of a, a, guy, a guy in the Bible who was at a meeting and they, they, saw, they saw the apostles cast, he saw the apostles casting out, out demons and, uh, and him not being a, a true believer decided to give it a go. So the Bible says, and uh, uh, so he sees this demon possessed person and he tries to cast it out. The demon stops uh, and starts speaking to him and the demon's response is interesting. And the Bible puts it like this. The demon says, well, Jesus, I know. Uh, Paul, I know, but who the heck are you? All right, who are you? Who are you? I, I know Jesus, I, I know Paul, and he wasn't referring that he has an acquaintance with them. What he was saying, I know these men have authority. I know they know who they are, but who the heck are you? And the Bible goes on to say this demon beats this guy up, rips his clothes off and sends him running naked down. There was the first recorded uh, streaker in history uh, running down the street because he didn't know who he was. Paul I know, Jesus I know. And the reason he knew Paul and he knew Jesus because he knew that they knew their identity and the power of their citizenship and who was backing them. He say, I know them. In other words, I have, they have authority over me. Who are you? And still today, too many confused believers, not sure who they are uh, or who they really belong to, uh, being pushed around by life and, and, and the enemy. But Jesus said, and we just read it, I have come that you may have life and that you may have life more abundantly. This happens. This life and this abundant life happens we understand our birthright and the power that's in our citizenship. We are sons. We are daughters of the Most High God. We are citizens of heaven. Heaven backs us. We, we don't serve the King. We serve the King of Kings. We're, we're, we're in that part. We're in that league here today. Dr. Livingston, I presume, uh, was a, an explorer and a missionary in the, in the 1900s. And uh, he uh, went to Africa and he did some incredible things down there. He brought salvation to a lot of people and, and he also explored Central Africa. But on his first visit to Africa, he met with the most powerful king in the region. Became friends and some say the king converted to Christianity, but they got on so well that the king gave uh, Dr. Livingston a spear. And uh, it wasn't a spear for battle. It was much more powerful than that. It was like a, a representation of the authority and the rights of the most powerful king in the middle of Africa. <coughs> and so, so Dr. Livingston could use that spear as a passport. When he was traveling through Africa, he was never hurt by other tribes or taken down or any of that because he would show them the spear which represented the authority and the power of that king. So he had rights now. He could go in, people helped him, people looked after him. They would not harm him because he was backed by the king of kings of that area. Now, it's important that we understand this because uh, what if he hadn't understood the power of that spear and thought, oh, well, this is a, a nice tourist token. Like, a, you know, like uh, it's just a something. And he put it in his bag to, to show the kids when he got back home uh, that he'd been to Africa, uh, like a, a tr some sort of trophy. Uh, and he didn't understand the power of it. He probably would have been beaten and killed in those times. So with the rights of sonship and citizenship, they have power. I want you to hear this. They have power not because you have them. They have power because you know that you have them. All right. He could have had it, but he didn't realise the power of it and not used it to what it was meant to be. And often we don't understand that the rights and the authority and the privileges we have of being children or sons and daughters of God and citizens of heaven. We've, we've grabbed it and put it in our bag and thought this is a nice thought, but the power is not that we have it, the power is that we know that we have it. Well, I don't feel like a child of God, Mark, or a citizen of heaven. You know, I'm not even sure I deserve to be called that. I'm, my life doesn't add up to what you're saying. No, no, no. You're, you're a child of God and a citizen of heaven, not because of what you've done or haven't done. Not because of what you feel or don't feel or even deserve. We are because He, God, says we are. Once we believe upon Him, once we believe upon Jesus, He takes care of the rest. 
It's not about our feelings or our deserving. I want to tell you, none of us deserve to be children of God. Don't think you're the only person here that doesn't deserve. We all don't deserve. There's no way we could deserve to be adopted and forgiven of our sins to the extent that Jesus has. But once we believe upon Him, the Bible says then, whether we feel it or not, whether we believe it, whether we deserve it or not, we become sons and daughters of God. Just believe upon Jesus and He takes care of the rest. Romans chapter 10. For the Scripture says, just in case you thought I was making this up, for the Scripture says, whoever believes on Him will not be put to shame. For there's no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon Him. For whoever calls upon the Name of the Lord shall be saved. For whoever calls upon the good, the bad, the ugly, it doesn't matter, forever. Whoever calls upon Him shall be saved. So it's not our deserving, it's because He says, if you believe upon Me, this is what will happen. You become a son, a daughter, a citizen of heaven. I love the story of um, the young corporal in the Napoleon army. And uh, the story goes that uh, every now and then Napoleon would uh, inspect his troops. And this particular day, the troops were lined up and they were about to go out to battle. And uh, the uh, context of Napoleon's uh, army was they were so strict, so rigid, and uh, no soldier was allowed to move or even blink uh, if when Napoleon was inspecting the troops. And if you did, uh, you were either thrown in jail or whipped or beaten. And this particular day, he's got his horse beside him, a big, beautiful white horse, and he's walking down inspecting the troops. Something startles the horse. And the horse rears up and it's about to land on Napoleon. This young corporal who's standing at attention sees what's about to happen and dives and actually knocks Napoleon out of the way. Automatically, all his friends thought that's the last we'll ever see of the corporal because you can't move, let alone hit the general. He's on the ground and Napoleon gets up and brushes himself off and he, he looks down at the corporal who's not game to move <laughs> and, and he says, stand to your feet, Colonel. In that moment, he went from a corporal to a colonel. That afternoon, they, they gave him his new uniform. It had the special colonel things on it. And uh, he's looking all proud. And when you're a colonel, you don't eat with the corporals. You now eat with the, the colonels. You go to the officer's uh, uh, place there to eat in the morning. So he walks in in his new <laughs> colonel outfit and feeling all good about himself. And as he walks in, a lot of the officers there looked at him and said, who do you think you are? You're not a colonel, you're a corporal. You don't belong in this mess tent with the officers. And they they start to really rag on him. He's starting to feel the pressure of it. And he says, you're right. He says, I've not got the military experience of any of you in this room. And no, I've not been to military academy back in Paris. You're absolutely correct. But understand this, I am a colonel. Not because of what, whether I deserve it or not, not because of, of what I've done or haven't done. And there was a big photo of Napoleon on the back wall of the mess tent. And he said, the reason I'm a Colonel is only one reason, that's because He said that I am. He said that I am. You and I are sons and daughters of God. We are citizens of heaven, not because of what we have done or haven't done, it's because He said we are. And if you can receive that today, it will change everything in your, in your internal makeup to be able to stand strong against the enemy and against the circumstances that will come your way. Know who you are today. Know who you are and who you belong to. Understand your rights and authority. You have because Jesus or God said so. Live the life God has planned. Because one day you will leave this planet and the banner in heaven will be welcome home because that's where you belong. Today, we are citizens of heaven, sons, daughters of the Most High God. Don't just have those rights, know your rights. Know who you are and whose you belong to. Your identity, the power of your identity comes into knowing whose you are today. Would you bow your heads, close your eyes this morning.